If you need to get somewhere, let's say a new building, put it into Maps and Google gives you a route in seconds. But behind that seemingly simple answer is a complex system of data collected from users, satellites, cars, even camels. Today, more than 1 billion people use Google Maps every month. And in 17 years, it's evolved from a desktop application to a massive mobile platform that continuously updates information about a location. We have over 150 million people around the world that are contributing information with 50 million updates a day coming from the community, from the public sector. So think of the map as being alive. But the amount of data it collects has also attracted criticism from privacy experts. Here's how, in Google's quest to remap the world, it had to revolutionize the technology we use to see it. This is the tech behind Google Maps. You can search for a place, like an address, an intersection, almost anything. When it comes to digital mapping, Google wasn't the first on the scene, or even the second. But when Maps launched in the mid-2000s, it had technology many people had never seen before. I remember the day that Google Maps launched with satellite imagery in the browser. Everybody just went and looked at their own house. Craig is a professor in the Department of Geography at Hofstra University who studies data-driven geotechnology. No one had ever seen their own house in satellite imagery, much less in color satellite imagery, before. This was a new view on the world. Map success was partly due to acquisitions it made early on, like Where To Technologies and Keyhole, that made mapping more accessible to consumers. By buying Keyhole, they got the software that it took to have a easy, ready-to-use satellite image reviewer on a global scale, where two technologies provided them a much better user interface than was available elsewhere. And by combining those with just the sheer amount of capital at Google allowed them to spend in ways and develop those further that you didn't see before. Maps expanded its tech quickly, opening it up to developers, integrating Street View, and launching Android and iOS apps early on. But how exactly did all of this come together to get you from point A to point B? Christopher Phillips, the current head of Google's Geo division, gave us an inside look on the Google campus. The foundational piece was to have a real world model, the digital truth of what's going on in the real world, including where streets are. Let's take a look at a real route in San Francisco that Chris walked us through. Let's say I'm in the San Francisco Ferry Building, the farmer's market, and I need to get to San Francisco International Airport. To get that real-world model Chris was talking about, Google starts with satellite and aerial imagery to create an accurate map. This is layered together with data from Street View. To do this, they use a process called photogrammetry. Using this and GPS data, they can pinpoint the right coordinates for the image. If we take a quick detour off our route to France, you can see what the layering process looks like using the Arc de Triomphe. Think of it as a big jigsaw puzzle where we can put these images together and we understand the distance between images and where they sit with the actual location, the GPS location. Google keeps a range of the cameras that have been used over time to capture imagery at the Street View garage on its campus in California. It all started with a 500 pound camera that was forklift onto a van. You may have seen a Street View car at some point with a 360 degree camera on top. Some versions are equipped with LiDAR sensors, which measure the distance from the camera to objects around it. They're also equipped with GPS to get an accurate location for exactly where the camera is positioned. But to reach more remote places, they've adapted cameras to fit the terrain. Google has put cameras on backpacks to get to places that cars can't go. They've also used transportation like bikes and snowmobiles. In some rarer cases, Google has gotten images from camels, divers, and even astronauts. Their newest camera can be detached from cars to be carried around. We graduate to our most recent, which is a 15 pound, very lightweight, and that can be powered off of a phone versus a large computing unit that's in the car. This imagery isn't just for looking at. It actually helps keep their maps up to date by detecting changes since the last time images were taken. We are not just capturing what a place looks like, but we can detect that a business might have changed. We can detect new signs. There's now a stop sign here or a traffic light here. So understanding new physical attributes of the real world is what we've been able to derive. Once they have all the information they need to figure out what the map looks like, Google layers on info about traffic, routes, and businesses. To do this, they get data from local municipalities, public bus and train schedules, and businesses themselves. 
This is footage from 2013 of the software Google still uses to edit maps. A combination of machine learning and map operators edit the public data, like road networks, to match exactly what you see on the layered imagery. Since 2013, Google says they've been able to automate most of this process. So for Chris's route from San Francisco's ferry building to the airport. Right now, I can see that it's gonna take 21 minutes. In order to predict how long it takes to get somewhere or how busy a place is, Google relies on reviews, contributed information, and anonymized location data, and uses algorithms to comb through historical traffic patterns. It looks at current trends based on your anonymous location, aggregated with millions of other users. So we can overlay the trend with the current activity to then create a prediction. The company also uses your approximate location and its mapping tools to target ads and advertise businesses, which is one of the ways the platform makes money. We have the ability for businesses to actually promote themselves on the map. So whether you're searching for a place to go and if it's relevant to the people who are in that area, we can show that as one of the results. So far, Google has mapped more than 250 countries and territories. But as it's added more data and ingrained itself in our lives and culture, users and regulators have pushed back and demanded guardrails. Privacy is a big issue with any kind of geographic technology. And Google Maps is only so much more so. Because Google Maps is down to an individual street address, down to individual people when we connect it to things like your Gmail account or your wallet uh, or your Wi-Fi network. Google has been criticized and in some cases taken to court for things like the amount of data it collects, street view images showing private property, and grabbing data from unsecured Wi-Fi networks with street view cars. Google says the data from you that it uses to inform traffic and busyness is anonymized. We use a technology treatment called differential privacy. Differential privacy allows us to separate you and your activity from what we aggregate from millions of people as signals to derive insights around like busyness and how long the walk or the drive may take. But some data that is used to tailor your personal map, like noting that you've been to a location before, isn't. They say that that data is not sold or shared with third parties. Google also says that it gives users privacy controls like toggling location history on or off, searching in incognito mode, and auto-deleting location data. And we're always improving how we manage the information we capture to protect people's privacy and make sure that we only have the critical amount of data to help power the most useful products. With its advances in technology, its advertising priorities, and even its criticism, Google Maps has helped change the way we navigate the world. The biggest improvement that Google Maps has made is making geographic information much more accessible to a very large number of people. The biggest downside, there's something paying much closer to attention to the intricacies of every movement you make when you carry your phone. Google says the future of maps aims to be more comprehensive and immersive. We're taking technology where we can combine and fuse together satellite imagery, aerial imagery, street view imagery, user contribution to create a photorealistic view of what it might feel like to check out a park. What's the vibe of it? What's the vibe of it on a different day? Immersive View is Google's next step in using their database of information and imagery to map the world.